So as always, we're gonna tr try to start this exactly at 35 miles per hour. I will reset my trip meter, are you ready? I'm and you will start the timer. I'm ready. And hit it. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm All right, it, wow. Can we get 60 miles an hour yet? No, I'll tell you when. 57, 58, 59, 60. Mr. Truck, can one pickup actually do everything all at once? Well, we're gonna find out. The first year of an AT4X on a heavy duty. Yep. And it's GMC. This is a 2024 AT4X AV edition off-road beast heavy duty truck. But we're in the I Gauntlet World's Toughest Towing Test to see how it can go up and down the mountain. Are we gonna lose any towing ability? Well, we'll see what happens. What this iGauntlet is all about is finding out, can one truck do everything? Oh, a lifted truck, an off-road truck, truck. Yes. So, can a truck go off-road on rocks? Uh, well, this is not an off-road video, but uh, can it also tow trailers? On rocks. On rocks, or <laughs> highways. <laughs> yes, that would be fun, and this is one well-equipped truck. Does this have lockers front and rear? It has a rear locker, it does not have a front locker. Oh. Uh, this is the most, equipped and the highest, most capable off-road heavy duty that G General Motors and AEV have ever built for production. Wow, this that, is means, it. that means it's over $100,000. It is, at the end of the video, we'll tell you the exact price, but it is over $100,000. All right, we're starting the Ike downhill. Cool. At 50 miles an hour, right there. Okay, how many brake applications? None? None so far. Okay. So my tow haul mode is enabled. We're in two-wheel drive. Your exhaust brake on? My exhaust brake is on. So we'll see if everything goes perfectly, which it's not because I see I have traffic here. Yeah. Um, if everything goes perfectly, then we may have one brake application, my friend. Really? Well, that'd be good because this only has, what, a single speed exhaust brake? Yeah, basically. There's only one setting. Oh, here's my one first brake application. Okay, there's one. That's Downshift. Good. Okay. I think second yeah. downshift. So Girl. two downshifts. Yeah, there's one brake and two downshifts. I got it. <laughs> so. Oh man, the road is rough. It's still rough. It was rough and then it's still rough. So what does the AT4X heavy duty mean? Well, it's a long name, right? <laughs> because it's a Sierra 2500 heavy duty and they had an AT4 before. Okay. Um, and it was already a pretty cool off-road yeah, specific yeah. truck. But the X gives you a suspension lift about an inch and a half taller, gives you bigger tires, 35s, and special shocks, DSSV shocks. Great shocks. Yes. Uh, of course, when you add features and tires and all the rest, your payload will go down. But yes. we're here to find out, is it gonna be swaying? Is it gonna affect the truck overall? Well, that is cool. It's hard to make a truck that does everything, and maybe this one is, maybe it isn't. So this is the, the normal uh, Allison branded, the normal Duramax diesel, yep. and the 10-speed automatic. Yep. So for the 84X off-road model, they're not touching the powertrain, right? Okay, that's good. So they're not touching the output. is still the same. We can talk about it in a little bit under the hood. The transmission is the same. The exhaust brake feature is the same, right? Right. So they're not actually touching those things. But what's different is also, the biggest difference um, is also the bigger tires. But if you lift the truck too much, that's not good for towing, right? Because you have to have different hitches, you have to level it out, right? You have to do a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. Is this still a 373 axle or what is it? It's the same, yeah. It's a 342. Oh, it's a 342. Because That's diesels have 342. GM loves 342. Yeah, they do. So I set the cruise control at 50. I made sure that it's not adaptive and it's doing really well. Look at this. So the RPM is around, what, 2800 RPM? Okay, that's good. Got yeah, some, some braking going on yeah. with the engine. It's good. Yeah. It's and it's not touching its brakes. I'm monitoring gain. So I have my screen right there. 
and it hasn't touched the brake yet for the cruise control system. That's good, that's good. Mr. Truck, what do, you, what do you think of my uh, trailer job? Well, this is cool. You finally got the good kind of turnbuckles. I like those, but wait yes. a minute. You can't have loose chains all over the place. You should well, actually have it. I think I bought uh, this chain is a little bit too long. For this I, job. It is a very long chain, but now you need to stick a piece of wire through the end yeah. of these puppies and hold on to that chain. That's what we used to do on the farm. Well, here's my use case for this truck, okay? Oh, wait a minute. You've been dragging this thing, haven't you? Look at that. What? You dragged this chain. Why, why, why would you point that out? Because <laughs> all the shine's gone. So, here's my use case. You're living up in the mountains. You have a cabin. Yes. But you're building a new barn okay you need a machine to okay. build your a barn a skid loader a cat skid but loader. how are you gonna get up there with you need an off-road truck hey that's a good idea right a lift that off-road truck so you yeah. climb one of those boulders but you, you want to tow, but you want to tow heavy loads it's true well this is altogether this trailer is eleven thousand pounds well that's cool it's a tilt trailer so it's easy to load and it's got plenty of room i like your trailer thanks well of course we're using the gen y hitch that's what we use on all of our tests this one here is this new Phantom. This one actually is rated at 18,000 pounds. And it's a little lighter than what the other ones are, you know, that go in the 20s and the 30s. But this is cool, it's still adjustable hitch. And it's called the Phantom X. But that's awesome, I love that. We're starting to use this all the time. And this one happens to be a two and a half inch shank for these heavy duties, which is what you want. And if you do want those special hitches, right? Because we're talking about different capacities, different trucks, and also like fifth wheel or even gooseneck, where can I buy hitches, Mr. Truck? Oh, you could buy hitches and balancers and anything you need for safe trailer towing from store.mrtruck.com. Which is your place. Oh, it is. Yeah. My God, it is. And I'll be the one that answers the phone. You don't have a robot answering the phone no, for you? I, no, and I don't have any of those places in India or China answering the phone. It's all me. It's all me. And we always, when we test diesel or gasoline trucks and SUVs, we always do that 50 to 60 mile an hour gap, right? Right. Because at the very top of the mountain, the speed limit is, is 50, and then the rest of the downhill stretch is 60 miles an hour. So that's how we try to measure our brake applications. Exactly. And actually, doing really well. It looks like you're going to be correct. It's only going to have one brake application. Yeah. So I yeah, I had to slow it down at first. Then it downshifted. It remembered that speed basically, right. and I set my cruise control system because it doesn't have that automatic feature like Ram and Ford. Right, right. right. And it's, it did it. it. It kept the same speed. Exactly, it's doing really well. It doesn't need to be a two-speed exhaust brake. It's doing well the way it is. All right, Mr. Truck, so final result in the downhill is one brake application, really excellent performance. That's great. I was very confident and, uh, well, now we have to go up the mountain. Well, yeah, now how does that relate to your theory about a lifted, heavy off-road truck trailer towing? Then you think that made any difference coming downhill, that extra weight right. help us or not help us? Or did I, it... I feel the same as yeah, we did exactly. in a normal truck. So I think that part for the downhill looks yeah. like it's no it's, difference. It's all safe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all good. good. That's good. All right, Mr. Truck, so this is a loaded measurement, 42 and a half. And this is with the weight of the trailer all the way on this. Are we going to measure up to this other yeah, thing? Yeah, because this is what I was going to point out. What if you measure all the way up to the top of the bed rail? That's about 59? Yeah, almost, 59. Almost 60 inches. But Mr. Truck, can you reach the uh, bed floor? Sure, you see me dangling? I can't reach the floor. This is a lifted truck. Mr. Truck, under here. I can see we have a huge amount of space left, so we're nowhere near the bump stop. Well, that's I, cool. I think. Let me put my let me put my hand in there. There's a huge. It's like four to five inches of space. Well, of course this thing's made to do over eighteen thousand, <laughs> towing eleven thousand. So of course there's seven thousand pounds of squat not there yet. But let's measure the squat now. We need to unload the trailer. Okay. This is 43 and three quarters. Okay, so 42 and a half. What? That's like one and a quarter. 60 and a half. So it's only about an inch of a squat, Mr. Now, Truck. That there, that's 44. Is that what you said it was? Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. like a one and a quarter inch of squat, one which is quarter. almost nothing. Well, that is nothing. 
That's that, great. It looks just a hair bit lifted on the front, so you can tell that's what their, where that inch is. But yeah, no, that's not, not nothing I would worry about. And of course, we're using a weight distribution hitch. That's good. I should have so, pointed that out. Yeah. When we were so that will that will help a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, eha! Yippee ki yay! Are you ready for the uphill run in this big macho truck? Yeah, this big old off roader. All right, so as always, we're gonna tr try to start this exactly at 35 miles per hour. I will reset my trip meter. Are you ready? I'm and you will start the timer. I'm ready. And hit it! Are you there? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm All right, there. it's wow. Can we get 60 miles an hour yet? No, I'll tell you when. 57, 58, 59, 60. 13 and a half. Really? Yeah. That's quick. Is that fast? For a diesel. Okay. I think that's quick. Oh, diesels are powerful. I mean, I mean, we're not maxed out, right? Oh. So we're towing 11,000 because this particular truck we have right now doesn't have a fifth wheel or a gooseneck yeah. package on it. Yeah, it'd be a pretty tall truck for a fifth wheel. We could do it. But you could do it, I yes. I could do a gooseneck, you know, with a flatbed and nothing over the neck like a horse trailer. You could do it. You could do it. Yeah. But I, I felt like the acceleration was still quite good, even though we're turning bigger tires and we're tall and we're higher in the air right right and we're still towing a fairly heavy lump the 84x can be had with two engine options right either a gas v8 are they both 6.6 yes <laughs> or this this is the duramax v8 the 66 this is a magical duramax these things do really well for not being the most powerful one in the class they tow really really well yeah and they're relatively smooth and quiet how much power? Horsepower is 470, torque is 975 pound-feet of torque. And yep. it acts like it, it's actually pretty cool. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what's what? this? What? What's this? Oh, it's your favorite drain plug for the um, air intake. I thought it was a nipple, it's a drain plug? Well, yeah, it can be. Okay. You know, speaking of diesels, I think this is one of the better diesel values out there. Oh. Because basically for that 9,500 buck upcharge, you know, that's a diesel out and Allison branded. So, you know, the rest of them, they get up there 12, 13,000 for all that stuff. So I think that part of it is good. Yeah, it is. Because like a power stroke, high output power stroke, now these days is about 12,500. Yeah. And the Cummins <laughs> high output without Ison is about, what, 11 or 12 almost. At least, yeah. 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 So I think that's a good value on these. Now, what did this, this is the AEV off-road package? Yep. And what was that, 9,300 bucks? Yeah, so that's on top of the 84X. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and that's, well, that's kind of a steepish price, but you have to remember that they in engineered these bumpers and the skid plates and the wheels and everything like that to all work together. And it's built at the factory at GM. Oh, that's right. They so do it's not an wheels, yeah. It's not the aftermarket thing. No. It's built at the factory. So the warranty is good with GM. Yep. Well, that's good. You know, that's awesome. But you know, this is a GMC 84X, so it's an well, expensive you, thing. But what? How much more is it than what a, a ZR2 2500 heavy duty Chevy? It's about ten grand more. Ten thousand dollars, and that gives you the massaging seats, huh? Oh yeah. Are you using yours? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no. Of course, we have the latest interior. It continues for 2024. And here's a couple of things for towing. I have my exhaust brake button down here. Yes. And you know what I don't like? I mean, I like that the exhaust brake is here, of course. Of course. You have to have it's it. It's a good spot to be, too. Uh, yeah, but it's not at the same place where the tow hole mode is. Oh. The tow hole mode is on the other side. Why, Why can't that? they be together? I know. Look, they could take throw one of these weird ones out, you know? <laughs> And because this is an 84X, I have a selectable rear locker. Good, that's good. That's better than that darn clutch thing. But that's also good for like job sites, right? When you're entering like a dirt lot like this, yeah. and let's say it's snowy or muddy and you're starting to churn through it, lock it up and just go. And then you got three tires turning. Yes, because awesome. the front is not, doesn't, doesn't have a selectable locker. It's kind of a traction control system, you know, that kind of goes side to side. Oh, okay. Now, I have a question. Yes. You know, the fenders, you know, they're kind of 
not square, but they're kind of with that shape. Yeah. Is that why they do the start button shaped like the fender? I it's think. like a key. It's like you're playing a piano, you know, so, so you're playing a symphony <laughs> and one of your symphonies is your engine and, and then it has something else. <laughs> what? Look, look at the screen. Hold on. It's still there. Wait. Oh, where is my... Aha! Uh -huh. All the massages. My massage. Seats. Oh man. Yes. That's my yes. favorite thing on the truck is when the ones that have massaging seats, it's incredible. Yes. But you gotta be careful because sometimes it puts you asleep, sometimes it gets you excited. So we gotta well, be careful. No, no, but after a heavy day of working, you want you know you want to relax yes. a little bit. I like the butt massager too. That's yes. awesome. This is a little bit unique. This brake controller position right. here. Yeah. But I'm used to it now. My hand is usually resting here. So in an emergency, you could squeeze this and actuate your trailer brakes or control your brake gain. No, so I, I agree. I don't think it's a bad place. Chevy still puts them up there, right? Yeah, Chevy has okay, it somewhere so it's here. it's a unique GMC thing. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. That's why they cost more. Right now, I'm not having any problems keeping 60 miles an hour. We're just rolling up a mountain like it's a casual yeah. afternoon. It is, it's and, good. And also, you know, the handling of this truck is pretty amazing. In fact, if I didn't look in the mirror, I probably, let me turn on my camera mirror. Oh, I like that. I, I, I probably wouldn't, if you asked me, are we towing? I probably would have said no. Well, yeah, that's, that's a cool thing about these diesels. You got all that massive torque. And also the suspension is wonderful. Like you would think it would squat too much or become somehow unstable, right? But yeah. it's, not, it's not the case. It's really solid as a rock. So what does AEV stand for? American Expedition Vehicle. Oh, so that is a Bison. Is that part of their trade? Yeah, bison? bison is our Chevrolet name, and then oh. of course AEV is the company. Well, now you know because of the heavier diesel, because of this package, the AEV package. So did that affect what the payload is? Definitely it does. Yeah, it's it's definitely lower. But I can show you the sticker. I can show you the sticker and um, it's still a good number. I always complain about payloads, right? Right. But I can't really complain right now because it almost has 2,700 pounds of payload. Which is decent for off-road truck. Yeah, especially a luxury truck like this. Yes. Because even like five of us, like let's say there were five of us, we would sit in there, that would be like a thousand pounds, plus a trailer tongue weight, plus other stuff. You could still carry a lot of things. Well, that's true. That's true. That's what you want. You want to have room for the mother-in-law and the, and the beer chest. All those things are yes. necessary on these kind of trips. And then it says, not for this truck, but for this configuration, it will tow 18.5 right there. Well, I, I thought wish... that was the, the number for this truck was 18.5. It's close, but remember, it's not VIN specific, that lower number. I know, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. And we're going <laughs> to come on, GM, get that fixed. We're going to complain had... until the end of time. I know. You had a really cool thing going on there and you blew it, man. Uh, how about we measure oh. interior sound and see how these tires, if these tires are loud? Yeah. I don't think so, but let's measure. It's bouncing between 58 and 61. It looks like 61 is probably the best average. But that's very it's, quiet. It's very good, yeah. Because, like, the quietest truck recently. Wasn't that the Rivian electric truck that we tested? Yeah. That was like 58 or 59. Right, I think all those electric trucks are hardly make any noise too, yeah. you know, that's what they do. That's really amazing that this diesel, I mean, it's so refined now, right? Yeah, yeah and it's not aftermarket exhaust or anything like that. And it's, it's doing really well. This is a comfortable, quiet truck. And you get, you got the cruise control on now? No, I'm using my foot because we do have a bit of traffic and I'm trying to maintain 60 miles an hour. Okay. And we'll see, a perfect run would be eight minutes, right? Yes. Because yes. we're going eight miles, climbing a 7% grade, and a perfect run would be eight minutes, basically. And that's cool if we can do that with a heavy duty truck, heavy duty diesel. And towing 11 thou. Yeah. Look at this, my transmission is 162 Fahrenheit. Oh, it's cold. My um, coolant is still below half. And what's the outside temperature? The outside temperature is 55 degrees, so it's not a freezing day. No, no. You, you would think, you know, we'd have snow by now, but no. Yeah. Um, it's actually a relatively warm day here. All right, we're coming up to the uh, ultimate, the ultimate finish line. That's good, because when we get there, I'm going to turn on the massage seats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. 
so I'm still maintaining I have power to spare. It says 11,158 feet above sea level and closing the timer now. 7.59. That is perfect. It is. We got it into eight. That's <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. That's perfect. 7.59. Time. And 4.7 MPG, which is one of the better MPGs I think we've had uh, yeah, climbing with diesels. Exactly. A lot of them are in threes. But, the, uh, but when we are in the threes, we usually tow heavier, That's right? True. That's true. And at the end of this video, stay tuned just a couple more minutes because when we go down all the way back to Denver, I'll be able to tell you and show you the actual overall average. That's good. Right? Because that's important. We have a 36 gallon tank. Right. And we want to know how far can we go. Now we have to have the verdict, the summary, right? And the grade. Are you measuring stuff? Yes. Okay, so downhill performance was excellent. It was one brake application. Only one, which That's is amazing. near near perfect. Uh, and super stable. Yeah, yeah, and that was with the, the exhaust the exhaust brake on. And cruise control. Tow haul mode and cruise control. Yes. yes. On the way up the mountain, perfect time. There is no problem with power. A hair under eight minutes. Perfect Four, time. Four point seven MPG, which was one of the That's better results good for that eleven thousand. Yes, and quiet. Also, it was really quiet. Yeah, we thought it was electric for a little <laughs> while. It was very quiet. What four point one? I mean six point one or sixty was? or sixty one. Sixty one decibels, right? Sixty one decibels. That's very good. Yes. So then, so it's all great. Towing features, the third star. Um, I think it has a lot of towing features. Cameras, it's got the towing application where you can remember your trailer. Yeah. It's got the brake control, exhaust brake. It has all the features. Exactly. It's, it's all set for towing. Yeah. Now, the fourth star is suspension, right, and handling. Uh-huh. The handling was amazing. It was. Very good for heavy-duty 2500. You know, when we had some rough spots on the road, too, because, yeah. you know, getting ready to get and beat up again by chains. And that's when the larger tire, I think, and the, and the really good suspension. You doing a hula? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Those are the multi-spool, what do they call it? MS spool, spool valve. Yeah, great, yeah. great shock show. They adjust themselves. I love it. And the fifth star is really range, right? Range and efficiency. It has a 36-gallon tank, which is pretty good. That's, Actually, yeah. for uh, heavy-duty off-roaders, it's the best. For GM, yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to the 40s. They're not there yeah. yet. 36, I still like 36 is a good And, number. you know, 4.7 on the way up, that's a pretty good result. And also about 10 overall MPG, that's a great result. Yeah, when you're towing traders, they suck. Yes. And this is a diesel. So, I would give it 4.75 stars out of 5. 4.75? Yes. That's like almost a perfect score. Yes. Nobody gets a perfect score. Okay. Well, okay. Well, maybe, maybe we need to tow heavier next time. <laughs> no. You know what I took off for? What? Can't reach in the bed. Well, of course not. It's a lifted truck. Well, it's that's, it's not foot. as useful then. When you're a million feet tall. You should be able okay. to do that. I couldn't touch the box. All right. Get halfway and finally, the finally, the price. This puppy costs this GMC $104,200. You know it's the top of the line. Yes, that is a luxury truck, but you wow. know why it worries me? What? Two years is up for my new truck. Yes. And I think every damn truck out there will be $100,000. <laughs> in two years from now. Two years. Well, that's the world we live in. Uh, of course, it competes against the Super Duty Tremors, you know, the Platinum trucks and Heavy Duty Rebels. Uh, so we'll do more testing very soon on the i gauntlet but i think this truck can do everything it can it can it can it's it's an awesome truck i like it well mr truck i wanted to share some of our overall efficiency numbers because uh -huh. that's very important so i reset my trip meter when i hooked up the trailer yesterday uh -huh. and i went 183.6 miles and it's registering 9.8 MPG, including some idling, right? Because been, we've right. been sitting in the parking lot for a little while. So, so this is almost 10 MPG. That's good. That's good. Pulling a trailer. It's, it's not too bad, right? No, 11,000 pounds takes a toll on them. 
This is a diesel. If that was a gas, it would have be been much worse. It would probably be quite a bit yeah. lower. But if you have a gas engine, you save, what, $9,500? Yeah, and this is the best value for a diesel engine is what GM has with their Allison-branded transmission. Everybody else is higher.